Hi, it's Sandra at Red Rover. Welcome. I wanted to talk about something. We get a question quite often. It's like, what is the one thing that is uh, the most important key ingredient when it comes to training a dog? Well, yes, there, there are certain things that are extremely important um, and it's not necessarily the tool. The tool has to be tool, I mean collar and leash and that sort of thing that the dog responds to and gets the message that you're, you're um, trying to get through to the dog, like don't pull, don't jump, that sort of thing. But it goes more deeply than that. It's, it's about structure and consistency and follow through on your commands and what's expected of the dog. Now, if the dog doesn't understand what you want, first of all, you have to teach it what you want. And that is done just very calmly. We don't wanna get frustrated with the dog, but this can be started very early on in your puppy's life, or if you get a new dog, a slightly older, maybe a rescue, um, you can start immediately. You would create structure for the dog so the dog understands what's expected. And what's expected is that you want the dog to behave in a calm and respectful manner inside the house. If you want to play ball and do silly things, let it run around, chase sticks, uh, play with a playmate outside, that's fantastic. Inside, the dog's life should be calm and it should be non-reactive. So if your dog is not calm in the house and not listening to you in the house and you haven't taught it any of these things in where it lives, it's really not going to uh, do any of these things when you're outside on a walk. So this is where reactivity comes into play. The dogs that don't have any structure, haven't been taught anything, and have been sort of in charge of themselves, maybe even the whole entire house. I've seen that happen where the dog has the people under its thumb, the people can't do anything, um, they can't have family or friends over because the dog is too unruly, it's biting, whatever it is. Um, if that's going on, then it's not gonna be any better when you leave the house. It's actually going to be worse. So we have to address this internally, by that I mean in the home, and externally by going to a training place, or if you can do it yourself, that's fantastic, but it has to start with some structure and for having the dog understand what we want. So having it on leash in the house and restricting access so that the dog isn't randomly roaming through the house is really the first thing. We do this, we recommend, we've done it with our puppies, but we recommend that you do it with uh, any new dog that you get into the house, but also with a puppy. A puppy shouldn't be free roaming in the house. It can be in a crate, it can be in an exercise pen, and it can also be on leash in the house. So it's not peeing randomly, um, running around, chewing things, terrorizing other animals or children or adults in the house. It, uh, we want to teach it to be calm and respectful and teach it the rules of our house. So that means no biting, no chewing on furniture or anything else, no jumping and um, just being quiet and, and pleasant. Like that's a nice dog to live with. So what we do when we get a dog that is coming to us because it's biting their owners or it's reactive on the leash or it's dragging their people, you know, I had one fellow come in and this dog had dragged him down a hill and he went tumbling over. And we're not talking of a small person. This is a full grown man. We just can't have that. So we have to teach the dog and the people how to walk their dog in a respectful manner on a loose leash beside us without pulling or sniffing or randomly peeing. We give a release command so the dog knows that when it's on a release, that's when it can sniff and pee. That's when it has some free time. We're not, generally at first we don't walk behind the dog when we do that. We, we stand stationary and we give the dog the amount of leash that's safe, let them have their sniff and their pee and their poop, and then we get them to sit again and then we carry on on our structured walk. When we're in the home, we can impose a lot of structure. And I say impose because really that is what we're doing. We are imposing our will on our dogs so that they don't take over our lives. And structure in the house for most people seems to be the hardest concept to get their brain around. A lot of people don't understand that they can have their dog on a leash in the house. Yes, 
Absolutely, you can. You can also um, not free feed the dog. That's uh, an excellent way to create some structure as well. You pick up the food bowls when the dog is done. You give the dog a time limit. If it doesn't want to eat within that time, you pick up the food bowls put it down at the next meal. Within a meal or two, the dog will be eating just fine and you'll have your dog on a schedule and there are less likely um, going to be any accidents, any peeing and pooing accidents because the, the meals are structured. We also can put the dog on a place command. So we teach that when we get a dog into the school that is having any sort of issues, um, even if they're not having any issues, we teach them the place command. So that simply means to put them on a place cot we use a raised cot so that they have defined edges and, and it's raised so the dog knows when it's on and when it's off. And again, we do this on leash. We simply tell the dog no when it gets off and we put it back on and tell it it's good when it's on. And we practice this. I did this with my first dog, Hobbs. He was a big boy. He, I got him from the Humane Society. And I think he was just under a year old. I'm not really sure. He was full grown, definitely. And he was a drooler. Oh my, would he drool. And I lived in a small place and the kitchen was small. I taught him and I taught him simply this just by putting him there. I don't think I had him on a leash. I had him on a collar. So I took him over to his bed and I would tell him to lay down. If he got up, I would just take him back there and tell him to lay down again. Then I would cook my meals, do whatever I was doing in the kitchen. So he wasn't even in the kitchen. When I was eating, he was also on his bed away from me. We did this constantly. And this just became his go-to thing. He saw me go into the kitchen, he would go lie down in his bed. That's the place command. He could get up, he could turn around, and then he could stay there until I released him. Now that's, that's key. You have to release your dog from that position. And he stayed there until I went up to him, gave him his treat and released him. Every single time for almost 15 years, that's what we did. That structure, was he stressed? Maybe at first for a little bit until he got the hang of what I wanted him to do and he would get a treat at the end. Everything was calm and collected. He also was walked on leash all the time because I, I, at that point I was living on a property that didn't have a fenced backyard. It was huge, it was 100 acres, but there was no fenced backyard and there was access to a very busy road and I couldn't just let him run out loose because he didn't have a recall. I didn't know about e-callers then. Um, so he was on leash. I walked him five, six, seven times a day and was it really structured? Probably not because I had him on a flat collar and he was a strong dog. I did eventually get him not to pull me so much, but I didn't know about prong collars then. I did know what they did. My vet explained it to me, but I didn't know how to use it. And we didn't have the internet then. We didn't have this overabundance of dog trainers. So I did the best I could and I would give him a release command. I'd let him pee, let him sniff, and then we'd carry on with our walk. And I used to take him everywhere with me, but he was always under control. Was he happy? Absolutely. This was like the, the happiest, nicest dog that you could imagine. And yet somebody didn't want him. So he was almost a year old when I got him. He'd been at the Humane Society for about six months. And for me and for everybody that knew him, they loved him. He was just fantastic. I think he was too much dog for most people. He loved to play. We would play ball. But as soon as I'd say it was over, he would stop. We're putting that away and we would put it away and that would be it. He never destroyed anything in the house. For me, he was great and I truly believe it's because the structure that I gave him. And really, I didn't know anything, but that was how I had to live. So I didn't have a crazy dog in the house. This drooling and the fact that I didn't have a fenced yard did us a world of good. And I had a fantastic dog and he lived to be almost 15 years old. So when people have free reign for their dogs, they love their dogs. There's nothing wrong with loving your dog, but the dog has to understand that there's some structure. And the first thing that we implement is teaching people and the dog how to do a structured walk. So there's no pulling, there's no sniffing, there's no lagging, there's no random peeing and pooping. Everything's very organized. The dog sits, you give the release command, you carry on. We give the dog ample time to have release commands. We're not making them suffer. We just want them to understand that when we're walking, they're not sniffing the ground, they're not scanning. The leash reactivity, 
doesn't always disappear but in a lot of cases if it's minor just one pop on the uh, on the collar could be enough if the timing is good and it depends on the dog now of course we get much harder cases than that and we have cases where the dogs are doing things like biting their owners or being totally disruptive in the household and i'm just going to uh, read i was looking back at some some old texts that i had from clients and this fellow came to us with a, a little dog that had been biting numerous people in his household and the main thing was structure so we started you know with a collar and a leash taught him how to walk he wasn't doing too badly with that but I really knew that because the biting was happening in the house and he was very reactive to everything so I had to go over to the house and see what was going on and we had to take the dog bed off the window we had to um, give him uh, scheduled meals a day there was no um, allowance of um, the dog on the furniture the dog could only be um, on the on the leash and collar and with somebody and if he did try to bite somebody then he would have to get a little correction for that because up until then he really wasn't getting any correction he was getting away with the bites so this is a, a text that I received from the client uh, he said, hi, Sandra, I'm pleased at the progress we've made with Duke in modifying his aggressive behavior. He settled in his, into his new routine and is much more in tune to my commands. The new routine was a big adjustment for everyone. I'm, I'm saying that, that's not written there. He continues, we no longer struggle to control him when going for walks and drives. I want to thank you for all your help. I think I can take it from here. And that's exactly what they did. They took it from there. They had the tools. It was a matter of structure. We can reward the dog once it's good. Lavishing undue affection on a dog that is biting and being uh, a resource guarder, meaning protective of its objects, which can be a human as well. Um, excessive barking, not listening at all. It's not doing the dog any good. And also petting a dog when it's in that state of mind or any negative state of mind just enforces that. So petting a whining dog, one that's anxious, one that is worried, petting it, picking it up if it's small enough to be picked up and coddling it does not help the dog. It helps babies, it helps children, it helps humans. That's great. Dogs are not humans, nor are they babies. Even if you want to call them a fur baby, go ahead. They are not a baby. A dog cannot be coddled into feeling better. It actually makes it feel worse. You only want to pet when the state of mind is calm and relaxed and happy. So here's a little thing. Just remember, you get what you pet. So if you're petting a happy and calm dog, that's what you're enforcing in the dog's being at that time it's more than just its brain it's being if you're petting an excited dog an anxious dog an aggressive dog even if you're touching it telling it no it's okay that's still petting in the dog's mind so we have to eliminate that and we can help people with all of this i know it sounds maybe quite foreign to a lot of people but it is the not the key because there's numerous keys to dog training it's not a one size fits all but there are certain truths and there are certain rules that we have to go with and then we adjust accordingly all right so i hope that helps remember structure and consistency and follow through so if your dog gets off the place command or you could be using its bed doesn't matter whatever you call it you simply put it back and then you must remember to release it so those are the keys the command you give the dog that you have to be able to reinforce it so that usually means the leash is on the dog and then you have to release it from that position, either by giving it a different command or your release word. All right, have a great day, enjoy your dogs, and let us know if we can help you.